Hi, and welcome to this section of the course where we're going to talk about a really fundamental part of physics, classical physics, <clears throat> and that is the topic of projectile motion. Um, earlier in the course, we talked pretty significantly about motion in one dimension, mo motion along one dimension when you're constrained to move back and forth in one dimension, and we had those equations of motion. And then we took a turn and talked a little bit about vectors and how to decompose vectors and why that was useful. Here we're going to talk about another really important reason why it's useful, and that is the real world. The real world is more complicated than one-dimensional motion. If I, you know, take this, this pen here and, and kind of throw it like that, you see, you've got two-dimensional motion going on. I'm moving up and I'm moving down, so the up, up and down is one dimension, and I'm also moving this way, so that's another dimension, okay? Um, the good news is, a lot of the equations will look very similar to what we've already talked about. Um, but you may be a little bit put off by them, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to write the equations on the board, and we're going to talk about them briefly, and I'm going to work a couple problems and go through them. And uh, what you need to keep in mind as we talk about this stuff, though, the big picture is that, um, is that as you talk about motion in two dimensions, the power of vectors let, lets you decompose that motion in terms of a vertical motion and in terms of a horizontal motion. Okay, and the reason you do that is because you can kind of independently work with each dimension and then that becomes much simpler. I know it doesn't seem like, like it makes any sense right now, but trust me, it will help you. Um, so let's just um, talk, talk about um, this as, as we kind of go through an everyday um, example in life. I'm going to draw a pretty big little graph here. I'm going to label X and Y directions. And um, here's a simple case of throwing a baseball. Okay, You have a baseball and you throw it up at an angle to the ground, okay? Well, that baseball is obviously going to fly up and it's going to arc back down to the ground. So the baseball is flying kind of like this. Okay, it goes up and down just like I was throwing the pin. In everyday life, we we're used to seeing this so often that it, we just kind of take it for granted that that is the that is the path that this softball takes, okay? On the moon, the gravity is different and it may take a slightly different path. On Mars, it might take a, a yet a different path. On Earth, we're pretty used to, to throwing things around, and so everything kind of looks normal to us, okay? What we can do, or I should ask you, how would you go about describing this motion, okay? Um, well, it, it kind of looks like a parabola, right? So you're tempted to think, well, the way to describe this would be to start writing in equations in terms of, of a parabola there. And um, I can tell you that that's going to get really hairy really quickly because... Um, because of the, uh, the fact that you have parabolas and, and you'll have all of your equations and your variables squared because the formula for parabola in general is x squared. So you'll end up having some fairly nasty equations. A much more elegant way to deal with it, and the way that we're going to deal with it in this class, is to decompose this motion. As I already said, you've got motion in the y direction because the ball's traveling up and then it stops here. It stops traveling up here, and then it begins to fall back down. So we can look at this motion, the y component of the motion, purely by itself, okay? And we can look and see how would it travel, how is it traveling up, and then how is it traveling down, forgetting about the fact that it's moving to the right, okay? How does it travel up and how does it travel down? Obviously, gravity is acting in the y direction, okay? So that's going to influence it, and that's, in fact, what causes it to come back down. We can also take a look at this motion in the x direction. Now, we throw the ball and the ball just keeps on moving in the x direction. Now, try to erase the fact that it's moving up and down. Just look at it moving in this direction. There's no gravity acting in the x direction. Remember, gravity points down. So if I throw the ball in the absence of air friction, for instance, it'll just keep on going. The only reason it ever stops is because it has